One of the big things in 3D modeling is working in symmetry. So mirroring is quite a big deal. So let's have a look at how we mirror in Valence 3D app. Okay, so first of all, I'm gonna show you what we don't do. So I've opened up just a default cube. So I've come down here and I've just said cube. So the cube is in the scene. And obviously now we can select by component. So select by face and we can move that or we can rotate it. Any of the component moves, you know, move, scale, rotate, anything that we want. But if this was a character, we'd want to work symmetrically. So we'd want to work left and right across this axis here, the red axis, which is the X axis. So you would think instantly that you just mirror it and then you just, you just get on with it. And the mirror is over here on the right hand side. If I just look at this one here and just click it, now it's, it says added modifier and it's now mirrored. So what's the problem with that? Well, if I now select a face, and we just pick this one here and we'll just come along with move and we'll move it out like this. So that's absolutely fine. And if I move it down, something's really off. So what's happening there is it's mirrored the whole cube. So everything on the left is also on the right and everything on the right is also on the left. So you're seeing what's, what's in effect almost double. So you can see there, it's gonna cause you problems all the way down the line. So that's not how we do it. So let's go back to our cube. Okay, we're back at our default cube. So what we want to do this time is, so first of all, make sure mirroring is off. So come back up here and turn mirroring off. You don't want any mirroring going on while you're doing what I'm doing now. So come up to the top left and then click th this little line one. So you want edges and then this little scissor icon. And then we just tap on the edge that's in the center. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna split it down the center left and right across this axis here, which is your X axis, the red one you can see there. So it's red and X. So that is the X axis left and right across the screen. Very normal in most programs. Tap the scissor icon and that will uh, confirm the split. And now it's completely split. So to select all the edges, if you're on a keyboard, what you can do is come up here and select faces. And then you can shift select all of these components. But if you're just on your iPad and you've got your pen and you come down here and make sure you're on the green button there, the two greens. And that means you can select in a row each one. So you can keep working around until you've selected everything that's on the left hand side, including the bottom. So that's all of them there. So that's actually five faces and then come back over here and hit delete, which is obviously the delete key. And now you only have everything on one side. So the black is the inside of the model. And now if you come up and you do your mirroring, you can see, I'll just get it completely level for you. If you hit the mirroring now, it just mirrors it across. But the good point is, if I go to faces now, you can see it's completely mirrored just everything that was on one side. So if we, if we now just carry on doing some splitting, so I want to go edges, split again. So I'll split there, I'll split there. And I'll split there and anything I move now. So if I now go to points and select any of these points, just watch both sides. You can see it mirrors it perfectly and you've got none of that duplication going on. And that's how we basically mirror something that's going to be or usually um, for me, it's characters and creatures are done this way. But obviously, if you're doing a car, you're going to want to do that. If you want to do a vehicle, anything that's symmetrical is how we do it like this. And then from there, you can use all of your normal, you know, uh, everything that's on this side. So I might use, for example, the subdivide. And that gives me the rounded, um, uh, basically the, the, the subdivided look. So it rounds everything off. So it's, it's, it's smooth. Now, one thing you do have to be careful of is you can see where that red thing is, which is the center line in this program at the moment, it doesn't snap permanently to it. In Blender, it's called cropping. Um, and in other programs, it just snaps it to zero on X. So that means zero across this axis. And it means that when you move around, it won't move off that axis or move across the opposite way. So you just have to be aware of that one. I think that will get fixed quite quickly in, in some of the new updates as, as they come on because it's such a, an important part. For a character modeler, that's almost essential. You, you almost can't model like this without thinking about it all the time. And if we had a smooth as well, it would smooth it off this axis, which, which obviously wouldn't work. So that will almost certainly come very, very soon. And that's it. That's how we do mirroring. Um, there is one other thing I want to show you. 
So I've just brought in a sphere. Now, if I, if I wanted to do the sphere and I wanted to work on both sides, I'd do exactly as we did with the cube. But say, for example, I wanted to move it across to one side and mirror it. So maybe I want two spheres, one on this side and one on that side. What we need to do, first of all, is get this pivot point into the center. If we come down here, so select the model, come to commands, and if we then do apply transform and say confirm, I turn recursive off and I hit conform, uh, confirm, sorry, and then it puts the pivot to the center of the world. Now, when you do your mirroring, if you go mirror, it mirrors it from this center pivot point here. And again, this is not like Blender in terms of there's uh, there's no 3D cursor yet or anything like that, but that, you know, and there's no ability to move this cursor independently yet in this current version, but I think that will come very, very quickly as, as a lot of people start requesting it. I think that will be one of the one of the things that comes along very, very quickly. But as you can see, you can mirror individual parts that are off this center line. And again, to do that, just change the pivot point to the center. How that might work, both of those might work on a character is, so for example, there's an example of the arms of this praying mantis. So the arms are built on one side and then mirrored across. So I've got them in the center. Um, but the body, as you can see there, is mirrored across the center line or it was when the, when the scene started. Let's just put wireframe on by coming up to the top. And if we just hold down on um, the cursor from the very, very top of the screen up here, you can see the wireframes come on. And you can see there that I've got it mirrored across this pivot point in the center there. So the head is, you know, it's mirrored at the same as the body would be. Um, and then everything else, the arms, the legs, everything is mirrored off the center line. Well, that's pretty much how that works. And if you wanted eyes here, they're part of the main mesh. But if you wanted two spheres, you'd do it as we showed you with the spheres in the last little, little bit of teaching. Hope everybody's having a great week. I'm away on holiday at the moment, enjoying the sun. So these few videos for valence that I'm doing are a little bit of an extra. So if you are liking the videos, give it a thumbs up. And if you like it enough to give it a thumbs up, then why not subscribe to the channel? Have a great week, everyone.